Hello everyone, this is Yingchun here, your TA for this PC class. And now I will lead this section and make some introduction as on this topic, as you can see, is on randomness, MCS, and MCTS. And here they are short for uh, Monte Carlo simulation and Monte Carlo tree search. And what are they? Never mind, if you have never heard of them, we will see. And first of all, welcome to the world of the game design. And uh, at this class goes, you already met different kind of games, right? And uh, even inside, even outside the game, you uh, even outside this class, you ever heard of different things. And in all of the games, they're one of the interesting and actually the hardest part, which is how to make a decision. This question hangs around, not only when you play the game, and also when you design the game or when you're trying to implement the solvers, right? And there are actually different strategies uh, about the game design and the decision making. And in this class, we've actually tried and uh, actually mentioned or taught different strategies or the ways. For example, we've talked about the brutal force, we've talked about different search strategies like BFS or the DFS, and also for some of the game, we can try to model the game and use the, the stats or use the, the mass or use the equations to model the game. And so far we can do find the, to make the decisions. And also we impl implemented some strategies like the, for the learnings, like the minimax, uh, especially for those one-on-one -on -one games, right? And also we've also learned some uh, reinforcement learnings to remember. We also have an assignment on that and also uh, if we really want, we can also make the calculation on the probabilities and the uh, conditional probabilities and um, uh, which sets uh, as the basis of the calculations and the modelings. And uh, apart from all this, today uh, we will you introduce a new things, which is we will let the data talk rather than our own establishing the model. And we will use only use the repeated random sampling time and time and time again. And then we have different, all the uh, repeated random sampling. And then we will let the sampling talk and uh, reflect the real distributions and to get the numerical results. Sounds magic, right? And let's see uh, how they really work. And for this part, we will talk about the magic of the randomness. Well, randomness is a way of the reflecting the true distributions. And uh, uh, there are different examples that arise here. First one, uh, I, I, uh, cock, I, I read the examples on the high distributions. And as you may or now notice that the United States currently is holding a census for the 2020 and for all the populations in the United States. And they are saying that all the uh, people's height is following a distribution of Gaussian distributions. Is that true or not? We're not sure. We're, we don't know, right? So what is the best way to do the, uh, to do the measurement? And some of them is to trying to uh, get it in a, uh, someone taking the inductive way or someone doing the deductive way, someone trying to they take the model. But the easiest way is to do some samplings. And uh, we take the people's height and make the count for all of them. For example, like shown in these uh, figures. And for each bar here, and they are uh, the number or the count of the people's in different height, for example. And then we'll see uh, the more uh, fine grained and the more people that we make the measurement, and then the more accurate results we will see after smoothing, we will see the distributions like this. And uh, it's not only for this one, uh, it's not only for the height, but also for like the planning cost distribution and for other things. And it's not only for the normal distribution, it also works with the, the unique distribution, uh, for the uniform distribution, and for some other distribu uh, distributions that all make some sense. With such samplings, we can easily get the distribution of those. Okay, so that is one of the way that we are making use of the randomness. And the second is, is even more interesting. 
how we can measure the parameter or the constant pi. We know that uh, pi is a really infinite and we can never get a really accurate count or the value of the pi. So you remember 3.14615. Uh, the continue going on. And there's a lot of numbers there, but uh, we, how can we get at least approximation about that? Can we use the randomness? Yes, we can. How to do that? Well, in this picture, we show that there's a uh, axis and there's a, a graph shown here. Uh, if we set, uh, for example, we see this is the, the uh, ordinate, uh, coordinate, and this is the zero, zero origin point here. And we can see that this is from, uh, on the x-axis is from the negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, and the same to the y-axis. And then we randomly drop the dots inside uh, on this square. Remember, negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, and negative 0.5 to uh, positive 0.5 on the y-axis. So this is a square. And when, we uh, land the point inside this circle, we will mark it blue. But that doesn't matter, it's just a random dropping, it's fine. And when it is out, uh, as shown in this gray area, uh, it is, we will mark it as gray. But again, never mind, we just drop. And then after we drop like 100 points, uh, 1000 points, 10,000 points, or as this number continues, we will continue seeing uh, how many dots are there in this uh, inside the circle and what's the ratio outside the circle. Why does that help? Because the number or the ratio of the points inside the circle compared to the whole number, which is exactly the ratio to the surface or the uh, area of the circle divided by the whole square. See? So with uh, the calculation like that, then we will see, we will get a approximation of the pi. Okay, we will see. Uh, you, you can sometimes mention that uh, the two examples shown above are really simple. And sometimes we will uh, model, model something that we don't know before. What does that mean? Uh, for the first one, we know that it might be Gaussian uh, distribution. For this one, we know it's a circle, right? And for this one, uh, how about something that is really hard to model? For example, like this, uh, we don't really know what distribution this is or what model this is. And actually, someone might know this. This really has a mathematician uh, names for that. It's a Gaussian mixture model, which means it is not really one uh, Gaussian model, but actually there's a mixture or combination of different uh, Gaussian models. And also there's a saying that there's a mass uh, a formula or equation, uh, actually it's a theorem, uh, showing that all the distributions could be uh, split and uh, making up by the different Gaussian models. And never mind, uh, when we have some models or distribution like this, the problem, real problem is how can we get the exact parameters for each of them as shown here. And for example, as in this picture, we might see this, there are two peaks and there might be two Gaussian models. And what are their uh, standard deviations and mean for each of them, right, respectively. And we can, again, use the, the methods of the randomness or random samplings, and then we can get the parameters shown here in the graph. And uh, they are all EV mass or the stats uh, models. And uh, apart from that, I show the fourth example saying that we can also make a use of this method uh, of the randomness sampling to simulate the process that is really, really hard to model, which is in our real daily life. For example, we can make the prediction for the stock price. And also we can count or we can sampling to uh, model the average elevator waiting time. 
And uh, also, if you are interested, you can also study the score distribution of all the UIUC students, right? So there are different, they, they are really, really powerful. I mean, so you can always, uh, apart from using the real models, and you can use the, the uh, random sampling to get those numbers or distributions to for your process or for your of your, your interests and make a conclusion on this part i say we can always use the sampling counts to represent the generally uh, the genuine the probabilities okay and uh, there's also a uh, theoretical names for the simulation that we described before we call them uh, randomly random sampling as before, but here it can be also called the Monte Carlo simulation. What are the Monte Carlo simulations? Monte Carlo simulations or Monte Carlo methods are a broad class of computational algorithms that rely on repeated random sampling to obtain the numerical results. The underlying uh, concept is to use the randomness to solve the problems that might be deterministic in principle. And they are used to model uh, the probability of the different outcomes in the process that cannot be easily predicted due to the intervention of the random variables. And this is a technique used to understand the impact of risk and uncertainties in predictions and forecasting models. And uh, one interesting side note or the <laughs> small knowledge is on that why we use the name Monte Carlo simulation rather than other simulations. Anyone know this? And Monte Carlo is actually a city in uh, Monaco, I think. And uh, Monte Carlo simulation are used after the gambling spot in Monaco, yes. And since the chance and the random uh, outcomes are central of the modeling of the techniques, much as they are to the games like other the, the games that you are familiar with this. And this city is actually very famous for the gambling. So we just uh, use this name to, <laughs> you know, to give the, uh, the game or to give the credits to the city and to these uh, methodologies. Okay, above we are talk a lot on the Monte Carlo simulations, MCS. And then we are talking about the MCTS, which is Monte Carlo tree search. First thing first, what is MCTS? Like the name says, it is a way of searching a tree. Within this tree, its nodes represent the states and then the arc. Between them, uh, nodes represent the choice that would be taken from one state to the other. And it is the, the first implemented uh, in the game tic-tac-toe. And uh, uh, in this lecture or in this section, we will use this as an example. Okay, we all know this tic-tac-toe before, right? And now, first of all, this is a tree search, so we will build a tree first. And uh, we will all play the tic-tac-toe first, right? We even play the ult ultimate version of that in class. And we can see that in the simple or traditional version, there are nine spots here, and we can uh, place, when we play, or if you are the first player, and I will ask how many positions you can play. Of course, you will say there can be nine, one, two, three, four, uh, into nine. And uh, however, if you take into consideration about the symmetry, there can only be three, right? In the middle, uh, in the side, or in the corner, right? And uh, so they are the three things that we can take into consideration. And all others are the same. And uh, after these three, uh, this on the level one, and after this level one, what might be the other uh, potential uh, other next steps. And uh, also, if we uh, take into consideration about the symmetry, they are, there are two, five, and five different cases. And so uh, continually, we can build a tree like this. And as mentioned before, each of the, as a tree, each of the board here, uh, they are called the node, and they are actually the state of the uh, process during the process of the gaming things. And each link here are actually one of the actions that we may take or one of the decisions that we may take during the game. Okay, on this slide, so we can successfully build the 
tree first for the game, or at least for the tic tac toe here in this example. And then, how we can make a use of the random sampling in such of the decision making in such of the games. And usually, we will have the four steps or four uh, four phases. And uh, as mentioned here, we, uh, they are selection, expansion, simulation, and back propagations. Rather, we will see them one by one. After uh, making them abstract uh, into a, a tree like this, uh, we have the different nodes as introduced before. And uh, we will see in each node, uh, there are the two numbers. The numbers in front are the uh, numbers that you win the game. And uh, the number behind is the total number you already tried and uh, is the total count. For example, in this node I'm currently uh, pointing, uh, showing that in total I've, I've tried or randomly sampling 21 games, and out of them, 11 games I win. Okay? And uh, for example, we can see that uh, ap apart from this 21, 10 we select the first one, and 8 from the second one, and 3 for the third one. Uh, why we get this number? They are just randomly selected. Okay, that just a random sample, total randomness. And when we're making the selection, these are the three parts. And then we will take the selection. For all the selection, we are going to make the decisions, right? And usually we make the decisions to win. Okay, so each of the node here, and here you can see that each of the node here are just the node that to the current stage. For example, in the tic tac toe, and some of them. Uh, are not finished yet. For example, in the third state, that doesn't mean it finished here. That there might be some child here, but still, uh, because it's not determined here, it needs to be explored or expanded uh, step by step. So we will always stop somewhere. And when we stop to the one of the knowledge, uh, the key part or the uh, key to this expansion is to every time we only expand for one uh, trick or for one layer, or for one level. And uh, for example, like uh, if we, have, we are interested in this node, uh, which means we play this and this and this and this, and then we are interested whether this move is a good move, because we think this might be a good move, right? Because previously we see uh, I play three times and it wins three times. And then we are continue uh, working on this, whether that's a definitely win strategy, okay? If it is so, we can continue using this and just use this, it's fine, right? Uh, and then we are trying to make some more random uh, selections and to uh, make, make sure they, they work, okay? And then we can see that uh, when we play this, so this is the selection, we select this, and then we make the expansion. Expansion means after this one, two, three, four, and then ta -da, we play a fifth random planes on here. And then uh, in this case, we have one potential options or the moves we have. And then we expand this tree with one, two, three, four, four levels and expand it to the fifth level. And then that is one way we extend the pathway here. Okay, and then we play it here and then we make the simulations. By simulation, that means after these steps, still remember, there might be some other child nodes or other leaves here, but we don't really uh, record them here. We only record the final results, okay? So here we may take the results saying that it is um, zero, uh, one, which means it's a loose, right? So it returns here is uh, zero, one, okay? So then we just uh, simulate and record the results, and then we need to do the back propagations of, uh, to make the considerations or to include these kind of simulations back to all the tables, or at least the parent node that uh, this point is relevant, okay? And we can notice that uh, if we lose this game, uh, zero here, and then we also lose here, we still get one wins, a seven here, 
and uh, we still get another lose from uh, 11 and the 22 without another win. But still, here comes the question, why here 3-3 three, three turns to 4-4 four, four, rather than 3-4? And also 7-10, why instead of 7-11, it turns to 8-11? It sounds like a win here. Why is a win? That I just mentioned is a lose. Why? What happened? I leave a pause here. Maybe about five seconds, and you can think about that. Okay, time is up. And I think as smart as you are, you all notice that, or as you once played tic-tac-toe, you notice that it is uh, tic-tac-toe is a one-on-one -on -one game, and usually it follows the pattern of the uh, the minimax, or you will we will see that for each term, they are actually played by two different players. And so if you lose on this node or on this level, actually that means a win on the other, uh, uh, if we lose on the, uh, all the other levels, that's a win on all the even levels. Am I clear? Okay, and never mind. And uh, with these prop back propagations, we can make the uh, tree and larger and more complete and in this methodologies we will continue and get all the full trees and get the results on that okay and that is one way to make the uh, circle of the selection expansion simulation and back propagations and uh, this one uh, when we're making the decisions for the whole game that won't be a one-time things actually that will be a recursion of the progress that we discussed before. For each of the node, we will have the selection, expansion, make the simulation, get the final results, and then back propagate to, uh, to the very beginning. And then we will continue doing so and until the tree is uh, complete. And then we will do that uh, still again and again and again to find again, to find our best possible move on each move and uh, both locally and globally. Okay, so as mentioned here, multi color tree search algorithms chooses the best possible move from the current state and of the game tree with the help of uh, reinforcement learning. And also, you can do that with the minimax. Another thing that I do want to emphasize or to just uh, introduce uh, when we're trying to do something, there's one of the popular way we can select. Uh, the nodes are on the first stage. How, to, how do we score those? Uh, we can, there are some parameters or some interesting counts that we think that's very important. We think we should carry, or we should care about the WI, which stands for the number of wins of the node considered uh, at this move. And also, uh, with, uh, for example, we can see that this, uh, this uh, formulation takes into the ratio of the number of wins and the number of this, all the simulations on this move. And also it uh, plus, uh, apart from that is a constant and uh, usually it's uh, like the uh, square root two. And also we will make the uh, ratio, square ratio on the long n, which is the total number of the simulations and uh, by the parent and also the number of the parents that on this uh, node. And we will show this here. For example, if we are interested in this uh, node and we're really interested in like how many wins we have and divided by the total numbers that I tried on this node. For example, it's shown here, the ratio is seven to 10. And also we're also interested that how many numbers of the, uh, the parent node, how many numbers it, it tried compared to this uh, total number of trial or simulations uh, with, uh, with the this. And in this case, it's more like 10 to 21, or we will see is a square root two uh, uh, compare, uh, uh, multiplied by uh, the squared long n divided by 21, and things like those. And that, that is, uh, of course, one of the ways that we make the combination or the calculations of such model things. And, uh, uh, there are also other calculations for the scores, and um, they are similar, but they are different. They fit on different strategies and different games. 
Okay, another thing that we just uh, emphasize is to, apart from this Mooney color tree search, we can really don't forget and we can make a com combination of other things, other techniques that we learned before, like Minimax, like the reinforcement learning, and on different kind of games. For example, like if it is a one-on-one -on -one game like tic-tac-toe, always remember to use the Minimax. Uh, minimax. And if it's other, we can uh, rewarding memorable games, we can use that reinforcement learning. Okay. Cool. And so that's something theoretical on the uh, on the Monte Carlo tree search. And now we can see some state of the art implementations are some of the games that we, we really use all those. And we can first of all use some board games, use these methodologies on some board games. And uh, you must be very familiar with chess. And then there's also a shoji, which is a, uh, or jiangqi, and which is a very popular uh, Japanese uh, board game and uh, very similar to the Chinese uh, chess or just the chess like game. And also, uh, we can also model the bridge and the polar games using the molecular tree search. And also, surprisingly, we can also make the use of that on the video games, like the turn-based strategy video games. For example, example shown here is the Total War. Have you ever heard of that in Rome? And that is a very cool game. And uh, the AI, I think, is on the hard level. It's exactly used the Monte Carlo tree search and the algorithm to model the AIs and and it turns out good because it's a hard level. It's not the extreme level, but it's not bad. It's not easy or medium. It's really accepted. Okay, and uh, that's all for today. And thank you for your attention. And uh, please let me know if you have any qu further questions. And here are some references. Okay, thank you.